Hi, I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's Morning Musings is Names and Labels. I'm doing a series of Morning Musings every day, and I am using articles from my blog, Adventures in Density and Effort, as inspiration. Because I'm starting from my oldest blog post, the world has changed a lot in the last few years. I will stop myself if I read something that I feel like is completely out of date, and I will give you whatever I've learned since then. And also at the end, I will give kind of a summary of what I see going on in the world today. Names and labels. I've had a cough for a couple of weeks. It's been kind of interesting. I'm not used to being sick, so I walk around going, hmm, my head hurts for an entire day until someone says, uh, sounds like a headache. Did you take an aspirin? And I'll go, aspirin? What a concept. So yesterday I made a mistake of looking up the symptoms on WebND and I suddenly have bronchitis. So now I'm feeling like I need to buy cough medicine, sugar and alcohol free, and I'm not feeling like going to the gym. Although I've been working out regularly since this thing started, all because I labeled my symptoms. The word bronchitis has power because we've given energy to it. If I claim that I have bronchitis, then I join all the others in the morphic field that have ever had bronchitis, and now I experience the essence of what others have experienced. In the midst of writing this, I decided to take a break and meditate, and it suddenly occurred to me that my grandmother died of bronchitis when she was 96. My mother had chronic bronchitis when she quit smoking in 1969. So I decided to energetically separate from the collective bronchitis experience. Since then, I've been steadily feeling better. The cough hasn't gone, but I'm not feeling sick anymore. I've opened the space for something different to happen. Once at a wedding reception, I chatted with a gay couple, and one of them had been diagnosed with AIDS more than 15 years before. That used to be a death sentence, but now there are many people living with this disease for decades. The power of names exist beyond illness. People can be limited by their race, their religion, their nationality, their sexual preference. It's it's more than prejudice and it's deeper than labeling. Look at how you limit yourself with whatever words make up your self-identity. They create patterns in your personal hologram, silently running in your reality, that effect of choices that you make and the direction you grow in. Imagine yourself with no labels, or if this is too challenging, just remove one at a time and notice the freedom that opens up for you. It only takes a few brave souls to break through the collective energy to create a different outcome, which brings hope for everyone. Wow, this is a really juicy one, and so much has changed since 2008. And the first thing that I reflected on is our collective experience of going through this pandemic. And I had COVID in March of 2020 right at the beginning of things getting shut down. And I didn't believe that I had COVID because it was too much like a cold. And there were only two symptoms on the WHO website at the time. The two symptoms were like a really bad cough and uh, having a hard time breathing, which I always thought was like being winded from running. And since then, I had all these other symptoms that have since become a list of the symptoms. I didn't know that I lost my sense of taste and smell because I had been sucking lozenges to uh, mask my cough so I didn't, so people didn't think I had COVID. And so I just thought I couldn't taste anything because these lozenges had masked my taste. The most significant one was after I'd had it for a few days, I was trying to walk up a very slight incline from a grocery store and uh, I could barely make it up there. I, I just felt like it was imploding inside. And you know, this was March and it wasn't until August that I realized that there was a really big problem with oxygen deprivation to organs. People were actually dying from this because we were being told to stay home. There wasn't any way of really treating it at the time and only come to the hospital if you had difficulty breathing. And so then people were going to the hospital and they were dying in the ambulance. This was really fun times back then. I had all these different experiences with COVID the first time. And then the second time I had COVID last summer and I'm quadruple vaccinated, you know, I participate in that reality. And it was a really different experience. It was a shortened one, but it was interesting to see myself go through all of these things, you know, with a week to 10 days and still being 
super tired for like a month afterwards. So I think about this because there are people who carried COVID without having symptoms. They were infectious without having any symptoms. So I'll just say COVID is just a really interesting collective creation because the way I could tell both times that it really was COVID is because there was something weird about it that was unlike anything I'd ever had before. So I think we're shifting into this new creation of consciousness where a lot of stuff is sort of outside the box. However, we are also, you know, stepping into realities where things that used to kill us don't kill us. And we've collectively been doing that all along. You know, people don't really die of consumption anymore. There's a vaccination for that. You know, the story of AIDS, that was a pandemic. And then the other thing that I was thinking about when I was talking about words that uh, make up our self-identity. And I'm thinking about how as we grow in consciousness, those limiting definitions fade away. And specifically, you can see we've had transgendered people throughout history. You know, the Native Americans, they had acceptance of them in early Greek times, had awareness of them. But it's now become so prevalent. And how I see that align with our evolution of consciousness is our definitions of gender and sexuality have evolved, that there are people who are choosing not to define themselves. In my experience, that seems like a very high degree of consciousness. When you step into that awareness of consciousness, those limiting definitions disintegrate. So the other thing I invite you to consider is that it only takes a few brave souls to break through the collective energy to create a different outcome, which brings hope for everyone. So as you grow and evolve and you step into the universe that is unfolding in your favor, that works best for you, you're collectively helping everyone in the evolution of all mankind. So if you have any observations to share, or if you have any experiences of this yourself, please go ahead and add them to the comments. I'd love to read your comments. If you want a free sample of one of my techniques for transforming your life, go ahead and click on the Skybox technique that's in the link below. If you want to know more, my website is joan-newcomb.com. I do individual sessions where I take a look at the essence of who you are and what's going on in your life, and I can answer any questions that you might have, past, future, career, money, relationships, things like that. I can also help you create your own transformation using some energy techniques. And if you want to learn how to do this yourself, go to my website, joan-nukem.com and take a look at my coaching special. It's tailor-made just for you. I work with you one-on-one -on -one to transform your life with specially curated techniques that I've created. So go to my website, joan-nukem.com and I'll see you tomorrow for another Morning Musings.